it has been a long time almost 6 months after that we are meeting and uh, last time we completed uh, samadhi pad chapter 1 so briefly we will see what was there in chapter 1 and then we will start with chapter 2 so it is necessary also to go into the uh, recall of uh, chapter 1 because this chapter 2 vyas bhashya begins with referring to the chapter 1 so that's why we also have to discuss about it now you see uh, uh, it is said by the scholars and by great authorities that chapter 1 is supposed to be for the best kind of students uttam adhikari and uh, second chapter is for the other people now in other people all the other categories will come so what are those categories which will be there already in chapter 1 we had talked about five chitta bhumis so the first three chitta bhumis will come under chapter 2 and only ekagra chitta will come under chapter 1 for the simple reason that in chapter 1 if you see what all the techniques which we had talked about first of all the aim was given that uh, yoga chitta vritti nirodha now after giving us that aim uh, you know the vrittis were explained and after explaining the vrittis the various kinds of techniques which were suggested all those techniques you will find are hardly in a way dealing with the physical body no technique is dealing with the physical body except uh, the pranayam technique which was mentioned in sutra 34 of chapter 1 rest of the techniques which are there in chapter 1 they are all related to mind abhyas vairagya you see abhyas has not been defined only with the, how to do abhyas what is the uh, you know de- defined in the sense any specific technique has been not given abhyas has been defi- defined you know abhyas vairagya abhyam tan nirodha tatrastito yatno abhyas satu dirgha kala nairantarya satkara sevito dada bhumi now you see uh, who will do this abhyas because patanjali is not saying what constitutes abhyas in chapter 1 so it's a, it is something which is for highly evolved student who is already full of vairagya who has got uh, that intensity of uh, practice intensity of intention he is ready for it so for him chapter 1 has been recommended and other techniques also if you to see shraddha virya smriti samadhi pragnya purvak ittare sham upaya pratyay upaya pratyay shraddha we, we are lacking so we don't have sufficient shraddha the kind of shraddha which has been talked about there we are hardly ha- having that kind of shraddha so even that technique is for highly evolved person you know it is a purely mental technique same way when we look at the other techniques of uh, ishwar pranidhan we saw that ishwar pranidhan surrender to the will of god total surrender now for that a mystic is required a simpleton is required very simple hearted person you remember the personality of say sant tukaram narsi mehta mirabai kabir tulsidas Uh, guru nanak these are the personalities for which ishwar pranidhan is very suitable now we know that where we stand in comparison to these people so definitely it is very difficult to say that we can apply of course we can apply ishwar pranidhan but that is why patanjali has given ishwar pranidhan at three places one of the places in the chapter 2 sutra 1 which we are going to take today and then in niyamas also ishwar pranidhan is there and in chapter 1 as a central technique surrender to will of god that has been given but there it is much more deeper and that is the only technique one follows so what what guru nanak will follow what tukaram will follow what bhaktas will follow chaitanya mahaprabhu mirabai they have only one focus so we are also not capable of that kind of uh, you know focus and surrender so definitely it was for a higher kind of student same when we look at the parikarma all the parikarmas are mental as i told you except one 
एक्सेप्ट वन दैट इज प्रच्छर्दन विधारणा भ्याम व प्राणस्य जहां पे प्राणायाम की बात आती है सी दे आर टॉकिंग अबाउट द माइंड कैन बिकम स्टेबल द माइंड कैन बिकम ट्रैंक्विल द माइंड कैन बिकम काम विद द हेल्प ऑफ प्रच्छर्दन विधारणा भ्याम बाय थ्रू दिस प्राणायाम दिस प्राणायाम इज पतंजलि सेकेंड प्राणायाम बाह्य वृत्ति प्राणायाम सिमिलर टू बाह्य वृत्ति प्राणायाम दैट हैज बीन रिकमेंडेड देयर patanjali seems to be in favor of this bahya vritti pranayam that's why he has mentioned it separately in sutra, in chapter 1 so except sutra 34 of chapter 1 all techniques are mental at the mental level at the you know at much deeper at psychological level so one can say that chapter 1 is for the students who are of highly evolved kind so where is the question of uh, uh, you know other tech, other people who are not of that uttam darja or one can say that uttam adhikari three adhikaris have been talked about uttam adhikari madhya adhikari and nimna adhikari so for that chapter 2 has been introduced because if you go to see i will not go into the detail of it because uh, you know but just one has to have little understanding of it if you see the chapter 1 is complete in itself all the samadhi techniques are at mental level all the samapatti techniques are at mental level and then whatever has been stated by way of chitta vritti nirodha being the aim of yoga that has been properly explained systematically logically till the end that both sampragnyata yoga and asampragnyata yoga they have been beautifully covered in chapter 1 so chapter 1 is complete in itself chapter 1 is complete yoga in itself so where is the need for the second chapter the need for the second chapter is there because that chapter first chapter is for the best kind of students and we are not necessarily the best kind of students if we were the best kind of students if somebody our guru told us that do abhyasa in vairagya that would have been sufficient and we will know what is abhyasa what is vairagya and what we have to do it will be very clear but we keep having doubts in our mind we keep approaching teacher again and again we keep reading so many things in fact we find that we are reading so many scriptures we are not going into the depth of one scripture we are not sticking to one principle dr jayadev always used to say that if something is benefiting you if something is being doing some good to you don't stop using it always go for it always practice it so if you are doing some asan for example and that asan is giving us little strength then we must always do that asana but instead of that what we find we find that we are looking for newer and newer asanas new body way body mechanisms new ways of distorting the body positions and instead of sticking to the very simple things we are looking for very complicated kind of things that itself shows that our minds need some correction and that's why this chapter 2 has been so the opening statement of vyas bhashya it says that the the yoga for the ekagra chitta the sanskrit word which has been used is samahita chitta samahita chittasya yoga udishta already samadhi the 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 ekagra chitta or the chitta which is one pointed that yoga has been in explained now what we are going to discuss in chapter 2 we are going to discuss the yoga suitable for the vyuthita chitta so what is a vyuthita chitta vyuthita chitta is a distracted mind a mind which cannot remain focused for a long time the steadiness is not there jisko hum log hindi mein bolte hain chanchal chanchal chit idhar udhar bhagte rehta hai so aise type ke chit ke liye they have introduced this sadhan path and as i told you that we had talked about five kinds of chitta bhumis which are five chitta bhumis क्षिप्त मूल विक्षिप्त एकाग्र एंड निरुद्ध सो इफ वी सी दैट एकाग्र चित्त हैज बीन डेड दैट बेस्ट काइंड ऑफ योगा इन चैप्टर वन देन द रेस्ट ऑफ द थ्री चित्त भूमि विच आर शिप्त मूल एंड विक्षिप्त दीज आर डेल्ट इन चैप्टर टू इन अमंग देन ऑल्सो द अष्टांग योग इज फॉर द मूल एंड शिप्त so the lowest kind of students are covered by ashtanga yoga and middle kind of students middling kind of students who are sometimes study sometimes unstudy we also find that in our life most of the time 
when the going is good we are happy we are steady we are calm and when the you know situation change some difficult situation comes we become sad we become little agitated we are, we feel that we have become become weak we are not able to deal with that situation we are not able to cope up with the situation so at, in such situations we become disturbed so occasionally we are steady when we are steady for, suppose if every day we are doing some meditation or we are doing yoga practices in a correct way then the outcome of that practice would be that we will feel very steady and calm but unfortunately we are not able to retain this calmness we are not able to retain this steadiness throughout the day आसन खत्म किया थोड़ी देर के लिए स्टडी है जैसे ही घर के बाहर निकले या जैसे ही कोई फोन कॉल आया वी बिकम अनस्टडी वी बिकम डिस्टर्ब एंड देन दैट स्टेट विच हैज विच हैज बीन गेन्ड बाय सम गुड वर्क ऑफ टेक्निक वी आर लूजिंग इट नाउ दिस इज द डिफरेंस बिटवीन द बेस्ट अधिकारी एंड द मध्य अधिकारी दैट वी आर नॉट एबल टू रिटेन टू समथिंग विच इज डिजायरेबल विच वी थिंक इज वर्थ वाइल विच वी थिंक इज यू नो नेसेसरी फॉर अस even such a beneficial thing we are not able to retain in our mind so this is the difference now why this is happening because of certain inherent factors in our personality why we are not the best time why we cannot we are convinced that something is good for us then why we are not able to hold it we are simply we are not able to hold it because there are certain inherent weaknesses in us these weaknesses could be inherent or we might have acquired in this lifetime as we are giving living life since our childhood we have gathered so many impressions from our parents from our peers from our teachers from the society in which we are living from the friends we have from the influential people the colleagues we have in office we have gathered various kinds of impressions while living and these impressions have created so many weaknesses in our personality and because of these weaknesses we are acting the way we are acting that's why we become weak that's why we become tense we are afraid sometimes we are not able to do the right thing we are not able to hold on to good state of mind because ultimately as i told you patanjali although he does not talk about what is abhyasa but he has given a very beautiful hint and that hint is that if you think something is worthwhile some mental state is worthwhile hold on to it that constitutes abhyas so throughout the day i will be confident i will be peaceful i will enjoy i will be happy i'll maintain calmness i'll maintain steadiness so if this steadiness is a desired state then why are we not able to hold on to it so precisely the effort which is required to holding on that state is what is abhyas so anything which can help us in that direction would constitute abhyas so there is no fixed technique for abhyas sometimes going to garden can be abhyas because going to garden may uplift our mood it may create good state of mind sometimes reading listening to the music talking to a friend talking to a learned friend talking to our teachers all that can constitute abhyas and whenever there is a need for mind to become steady and we apply any technique that can constitute abhyas because patanjali has given in very general kind of techniques here and uh, in parikarmas you will find the best of the techniques in the world which has been adopted right from the ages since history of human kind has started all the spiritual techniques which were used all over the world some of them are mentioned in parikarmas so that's why patanjali sutra is a grammar of spirituality spiritual practices it it contains the grammar of spiritual as my doctor our doctor jayde my teacher used to say this is a grammar of spirituality so that is the perspective that you know the mind who is distracted now vikshipta chitta can be termed as a middle kind of student so sometimes study sometimes disturb so when when it is when disturbing state is there we become we weak we are stressed we uh, we are harassed and we lose our confidence we feel that you know our life is not worth living all the stress symptoms come and when the steadiness is there temporarily that comes so for such a kind of student this has been recommended now first sutra which uh, uh, is started in the chapter 2 uh, sadhana pad uh, is tapas swadhyay ishwar pranidhanani kriya yoga this is the sutra 
तपस्वाध्याय ईश्वर प्रणिधाना क्रिया योग एज आई टोल्ड यू क्रिया ईश्वर प्रणिधान कम्स इन नियम आज ऑल्सो ऑल थ्री तपस्वाध्याय ईश्वर प्रणिधान इट विल कम इन नियम आज ऑल्सो सो पतंजलि वॉज वेरी वाइज वाई ही इज यूजिंग थ्री प्लेसेस टू एक्सप्लेन ईश्वर प्रणिधान two places to explain tapaswadhyay ishwar pranidhan because it is a repetition later on here also tapaswadhyay ishwar pranidhan is there and there also the ishwar pranidhan is there or tapaswadhyay is there so what is the need for that that we will have to understand that's why they say that kriya yoga is for the middle kind of student so here a kind of orientation to our life has to be given where we introduce the techniques of tapa स्वाध्याय एंड ईश्वर प्रणिधान इन अवर लाइफ सो क्रिया योग इज योगा ऑफ एक्शन योगा ऑफ एक्शन इन द फॉर्म ऑफ तप दैट इज ऑस्टेरिटीज स्वाध्याय दैट इज रिपीटेशन ऑफ द सेक्रेट मंत्र स्टडी ऑफ द स्क्रिप्चर्स एंड टोटल सरेंडर ऑफ ऑल वंस एक्शन एंड द फ्रूट ऑफ एक्शन टू गॉड दीज थ्री टेक्निक्स है no other technique has been given asan is not given pranayam is not given dharana dhyan samadhi has not been given only three techniques have been given here tap swadhyay ishwar pandita now if we when we talk about kriya yoga yoga of action immediately on hearing kriya yoga in some uh, some of the people might have thought about karma yoga karma yoga is a very famous concept coming from bhagavad gita so there is not much of a difference in karma yoga and kriya yoga because in karma yoga also you will find that there is a need for recognition of higher power in the form of ishvara and everything is being surrendered karma phala tyag karma phala sanyas that is what is the most significant part of bhagavad gita ultimately you know the message is that you know you have you have got right to perform your duties your your action and whatever comes in your way that becomes your duty so depending on our desires depending on the circumstances depending on the past sanskaras life is evolving we are facing various kinds of situations they are there because of our sanskaras because somewhere we have played a role because our minds are working in a certain way because we have certain kind of desires so we are facing certain kind of circumstances so the you, you know this evolving situations are there and in each of the situation we have to understand what is our role if we understand what is our role and we play that role to the perfection and then surrender the actions and the results of the actions to god that is what is karma yoga and here also we are finding here the slight tilt is there what is that slight tilt that whatever comes in your life you have to apply the austerity no matter what situation you are facing you have to apply the principle of tap so what is applying the principle of tap means tap means remaining steady remaining calm remaining tranquil remaining peaceful remaining objective remaining alert remaining balanced in all circumstances of life because when somebody comes and uh, some challenge come before comes before us or somebody comes and insults us immediately we lose mental balance we become angry we become angry we we, we are disturbed we lose balance of the mind and then we also you know say things or do things which are not good for us and this way we create problems for us this is what is happening most of the time so not getting disturbed and remaining balanced so what is tap tap is dwandhuon se mukti the two extremes in which our minds are running here and sometimes mind is steady sometimes unsteady instead of that keeping the balance gautam buddha has suggested madhya marg the path of you know it is known as balanced state so patanjali also talks about this balanced state so always keeping the mind in balanced state of mind that seems to be the aim for this so in a way one can say that this kriya yoga is for whom kriya yoga is for the people who are worldly who have desires who have families 
who have lots of interest who also have lots of inherent and acquired weaknesses so what they need to do if they want to spiritually evolve what is the technique they should apply they should apply tapa swadhyay ishwar pradina so all their actions have to be guided by tapa swadhyay and ishwar pradina it see whatever we are doing it doesn't matter patanjali is not asking us to stop certain actions you continue to live the way you are living you continue to do whatever you are doing you are not asked to change situation you are not asked, not asked to run away from family you are not asked to run away from job कोई संन्यास लेने की जरूरत नहीं कहीं भागने की जरूरत नहीं जहां पे आप हो वहीं पे इसका इस्तेमाल कर वेर एवर यू आर वॉट एवर इज यूर लाइफ सिचुएशन वॉट एवर इज यूर फैमिली वॉट एवर आर यूर सर्कमस्टेंसेज इन दो सर्कमस्टेंसेज इन दो लाइफ सिचुएशन ओनली वन हैज टू इवॉल्व हाउ वन कैन इवॉल्व बाई अप्लाइंग द प्रिंसिपल ऑफ तप स्वाध्याय एंड ईश्वर पंडा दिस इज वॉट इज द एसेंशियल थिंग so with the help of these three anybody can become very calm quiet and his mind can acquire more and more strength more and more clarity so th this is what is suggested now when we talk about this uh, uh, tapa if we have to go into the detail of the techniques we'll keep approaching these uh, uh, you know techniques again and again later on also because uh, when we are going into second third fourth sutras we will see how tapa is helping there how uh, swadhyay is helping there how ishwar pranidhan is helping there and these factors which are weakness for us these factors can be tackled only through tapa there is no other way the importance of tapa is that there is no other way we can uh, you know make use of uh, uh, this uh, change ourselves without using the technique of tapa so i remember one sentence which i had read let me see uh, you know let me read that sentence to you a man without self discipline cannot attain perfection in yoga see this is the vyasa bhashya this is the statement in vyasa a man without self discipline cannot attain perfection in yoga so now here lies the answer if we have not been successful in yoga or if we have not acquired a good state of yoga in our day to day life although we have been practicing yoga since many years but then the question arises what have we gained and if we have gained it will be always because of the self discipline we are applying and whenever we have failed we will find that we have deviated from that self discipline that's why we are failing or we are falling weak if we maintain that self discipline then there is no failure so what 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 it constitutes tapa is the main stay in that so you get up in the morning you go out of the house and suddenly something happens and you get disturbed at the train is late you are getting disturbed you are late you start late of the house so there is agitation in the body all the stress symptoms are there your bp shoots up you are worried whether you will reach on time or not so you know immediately the mind is disturbed and as the mind is disturbed so body responds to that body becomes weak the bp will shoot up and all the other parameters which are related to stress and day in day out if you are facing these kind of symptoms and mind is all the time agitated obviously it is going to tell on the body and body is going to respond in that manner so it is essential that we maintain calmness so how do we maintain calmness dwandva two extremes getting disturbed and calm you know uh, totally inactive between that one has to maintain this balance so without tapa it is not possible to really uh, Uh, they, uh, do this now. When we look at tapa, tapa has got many means. Tapa means physical austerity. So suppose if you are uh, various kinds of uh, this is a very practical thing. We will cover this uh, tapa in little detail. And when we are talking about this tapa, we have we need to understand why I read this statement is if we want to succeed in yoga, we have to keep this sentence in mind and we have to keep tapa in mind. Without tapa, we cannot change. And that's why if you will see. Uh, in in my uh, you know uh, in my video uh, there is a quote 
the quote, there is a quote of quote by Dr. Jayde, and that quote is you know very very telling, very important. We cannot construct something new without the help of tapa, because only tapa can help in changing our wrong attitudes, our wrong habits, our weaknesses. If we want to overcome our weaknesses, tapa is the only technique which can help. So tapa will be going along all the way in whatever uh, activities in the form of yoga we are doing that we have to understand. Now, when we talk about tapa, historical background, if we look at it, tapa has been a common spiritual practice all over the world. In every country, in every part of the world, the monks, the spiritual people, when they wanted to evolve, they wanted a direct communion, communion with the higher powers, be it nature, be it God, they always went for tapa. In every part of the world, monks, you will find that they are doing a lot of austerities. They will get up early in the morning. They will go through physical uh, you know, efforts, uh, standing on one leg and other things, like, you know, meditations. So many kinds of tapas are there. And it is the oldest technique in the world. In terms of Indian thinking, when we talk about the Vedic thinking, at the time of Vedas, when uh, yoga was not evolved in the form Patanjali has given us, at that time, austerities and tapa was the primary technique, primary spiritual technique. So tapa has been highly recommended in the Vedas also, and later on we'll find in Upanishads also, the mention of tapa is there. Even Bhagavad Gita, so many places in Bhagavad Gita, tapa has been talked about. And the details have been given. But because of, and our mythological stories also, you know, in every part of the country you'll find, uh, when they're talking about some great saint, he was an ordinary person, then he went into jungle, he went to mountain, he did a lot of tapas, he did a lot of meditation, he did a lot of austerities, because of which he gained lots of power, and he gained lots of stability, and he got insight. So these kind of stories are there. Apart from that, you know, there's a lot of misunderstanding about tapa, that when you want a desired object, then you do tapa. So like our stories are there. Uh, there was a king and uh, he wanted a son, but he was not getting a son. So he, somebody recommended that you go to this place and do tapa. So he went there and he did tapa and he got a son. A very common example would be, uh, you know, uh, that picture Mughal Azam. You know, it opens with a scene where Akbar, the great king, is walking barefoot on the hot sand of desert. And he's going to one Majar, he's going to one... Uh, pilgrimage place. Why? Because he wants a son. And then they have shown that because of his pilgrimage and because of the tapa of walking on hot sand in the desert, he got a son. Now, these kind of stories are also there. But we have to understand that yoga is not talking about any such kind of tapa. Here, tapa is slightly different in the sense that tapa, which doesn't cause any pathological disturbance, and which helps us in maintaining a calm state of mind, which helps us weaken the inherent tendencies and wrong attitudes we have. When we are correcting those attitudes, then those efforts in the direction of correcting our attitudes, correcting our behavior is what is required here. So that the past weaknesses can be overcome. That is the primary aim we have to understand. And then the second statement, which is there in the Vyas Bhashya, what does it say? It says that how can a yogi succeed if he has been, you know, uh, overpowered by the vasanas and the desires which are there and the sanskaras which are there? Our minds are full of the such sanskaras. Our minds are full of such weaknesses, such vasanas and uh, sanskaras and weaknesses, kleshas. So how can yogi succeed without the help of tapa? Tapa is the primary technique which can help. Now, if we go to the word tapa and its meaning, what is the meaning of tapa? In normal parlance, when we talk about tapa, tapa means heat. Heat. When heat is generated, normally when heat is generated, whenever two things are against each other and they are, you know, working against each other in resistance then the heat is generated. 
so example common example would be you can look at my hands if if i just rub my hands like this what is happening is that my right hand is being resisted by the left hand and my left hand is being resisted by the right hand so if i continue doing this there will be a lot of heat generated in my hands so this is exa physical example of tapa but here when we are talking about tapa what happens is whenever difficulty comes we are inclined to go on the path of least resistance we try to find out easy way out we want to try try uh, shortcuts and that is the reason why we want to find shortcuts in life always we go for shortcuts because we don't want to go to the te tedious process of going through the difficulties so we try to find out shortcut so now where the resistance comes where your body and mind is telling do this and you say no i will not do this then there is a resistance and that will create lot of agitation in the form of tapa so very simple example would be now i don't know how you all are sitting are you sitting upright are you sitting in a yogic posture or are you sitting on a table and chair and you are bent the spine is bent i do not know but suppose if i instruct you that in this class once the class starts you should not bend forward you should always sit upright and you should sit in a padmasan or you should sit in ardha padmasan if this was the instruction in the class what will happen after 5 10 minutes what will happen will you be able to pay attention to what i am saying if i tell you that you have to sit all 45 minutes in padmasan and then you listen to my talk then what will happen after 10 15 minutes of padmasan what will happen to the mind what will happen to the body if you are not one who one who is accustomed to this he may not find any difficulty but one who is not accustomed to it after 5 or 10 minutes there will be a pain in the legs there will be pain in the back and then he would want to change the physical position he would slouch forward he will bend backward or if there is a support he will try to take support now where tapa comes tapa comes when you say that no matter what my body is asking me to bend forward but i am not going to bend forward my body is seeking comfort my mind is seeking comfort but i will not go for comfort i will sit upright at least for 15 minutes or 20 minutes or maybe later on we can decide for 45 minutes i'll not budge i not change my physical position now if we are sitting with this resolve what we have to go through lot of pain there will be lot of aches in the legs there will be lot of back ache sometimes you know we will we will mind will get distracted because of the pain so what is being talked about we will not be able to listen to that we will get distracted we will not be able to focus this is what happens so slowly tapa has to be built up and that's why those who have been practicing yoga they will know how tapa helps initially when you did some asanas for example meditative postures are there or say paschimottanasana is a difficult posture so initially when we do paschimottanasana there is lot of discomfort and body is this body responds in a way or body rejects this so body is responding in a bad way that is that is how the body has been conditioned you know what happens whenever you are doing something at the muscular level if you are trying to push your muscles to uh, you know uh, an extent where which is which is not uh, normally there then that muscle will resist that suppose if you are extending the muscle the muscle will become short that is the reason we develop back, back pain how we develop back pain if you are bending forward unconsciously without awareness and suddenly if we try to bend forward our muscles will react and they will become short they will resist and in that resistance we may hurt the muscles and that is the first defense our body has but what happens if we persist every day we are doing paschimottanas now this would mean that we are doing tapa we are undergoing the pain we are undergoing the training where we are resolving this pain issue slowly bending forward every day bearing some discomfort every day bearing some kind of pain and gradually we find that okay we are able to do it
so this is how tapa works and this will be applicable not only to the physical body this will be applicable at the emotional level at the spiritual level when we talk of being aware being aware is not easy because our mind gets distracted and we have to bring our mind back to the focus again and again on the desired object that is what is yogic effort that is what is yogic concentration so every time we feel our mind is running away we bring mind back to the focus and continue doing meditation is that only in meditation we try to bring the mind back to the focus whatever is the object whatever be the meditation whatever is the object of meditation we should not lose sight of that we lose awareness and when we lose awareness it is because of the you know inherent weakness of the mind of becoming agitated becoming distracted already these sanskaras are there in the mind and we are working against those sanskaras so tapa can help us here in such circumstances now tapa is can be talked about at various levels you know we saw historically that the tapa was a very important technique in our indian thinking all scriptures deal with tapa all yogis rishi muni they were practicing this technique of tapa and here patanjali is asking us that if you are a very middle kind of student your mind is occasionally study occasionally disturb go for tapa practice tapa and try to work on yourself so that you can overcome your weaknesses now from that perspective when we look at this uh, tapa uh, in in yog sutra here what what uh, uh, tapa works against normally as i told you our behavior is to go for a path of least resistance because usme sukh hai usme anand hai because we feel happy there we are comfortable there so tapa in a way is going against the comfort whenever occasion is there and if we work consciously on this idea of going against the comfort that would mean that we give up comfort give up comfort of slouching back and slouching forward sitting upright that is giving up the comfort at fixed time every day we do this so this way various examples could be there from the point of view of divisions tapa can be divided into three categories the physical the speech level and the mental level so sharirik star par aur shabd ke star par to is hisab se bahut sari techniques develop hui hai so many techniques are there in physical techniques you know standing on one leg padmasan is there or other asanas are there they are all constitute uh, tapa and you will be surprised in mahabharat which is a granth or which is a scripture related to this uh, yoga philosophy and sankhya philosophy there is lot of yoga and sankhya in uh, mahabharat and mahabharat contains so many beautiful techniques and in that mahabharat it has been very beautifully explained at one place that there is no superior tapa than pranayam so pranayam again is a physical tapa it has got connection with the mind through the physical tapa through the pranayam mind can be controlled mind can become one point can become one pointed mind can become concentrated with the help of pranayam so pranayam has been considered as a highest kind of tapa then at the there could be several other examples you know uh, later on if time permits we can go into the details but the at the speech level what is tapa the highest form ta- of tapa which has been practiced by various monks all over the world is silence mauna not speaking they say that we waste lot of energy by unnecessary talk talking too much so when we are silent we keep quiet we are gaining energy we don't realize that after like the way i am talking just now after talking in this manner manner after for about 45 minutes or one hour it is definitely going to deplete lot of energy from my body and mind speech so maun and silence they have been practiced right from the inception of human race as technique and many great people have derived benefit benefit from this maun maun can be again of two kinds one can be kasta maun the other could be akara maun in kasta maun there is absolute silence where the mind also doesn't think thoughts are normally when we are not talking to other people we are talking to ourselves 
I'll do this. I'll reach now. It's eight o'clock now. I'll reach. I'll have dinner. I'll talk talk to my mother. I talk to my father. All these thoughts are going on, although we are not apparently speaking, but the speech is going on at the mental level. So Kasta Mona is controlling the speech even at the mental level. So when one is practicing the tapa of Kasta Mona, the thoughts also stop. But that is not easy. So for that to prepare, Akara Mona is there. What is Akara Mona? At least we keep the mouth shut. Thoughts are there, and sometimes. if the need is there somebody is asking us a question then we can write on the paper and give without speaking without we can write on the paper and give or through indication through you know gestures we can communicate what is going on in our mind so this way this uh, mauna can be you know highest tap i i don't know whether promil is there or not you know promil had given one example of uh, his kali uh, har kali in pnb bank she said that there was a girl who always used to talk a lot and people used to get irritated so they they used to shout at her they used to get angry with her so one day she said that okay today i am not going to speak at all and she didn't speak all day now what happened is that was fine others others enjoyed that she was keeping quiet but what happened is by the end of the day that that girl that lady developed very high fever so his all the time her mind was agitated she was wanting to talk but she was not able to talk she was trying to control her mind because she had promised that she will not talk she she beyond went on controlling now this kind of control if it is not done out of proper thinking out of deliberation out of conscious will out of willingness and if it is enforced or it is forced upon us then it can have very severe kind of consequences so she went into this severe fear and two three days she didn't come for work because because of this mauna she fell sick now this kind of tapa is not recommended we have to understand that why we are doing it what is the purpose of tapa so from that perspective this mauna mauna is a very high technique there are n number of examples gandhi ji always used to go in mauna to gain strength vinoba bhave he 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 used mauna as a great technique for himself when he said that whenever he wanted to gain strength he will go in mauna and he will become strong his mind will become so strong that whatever he wanted to do he was able to do because he will practice mauna that is the claim vinoba bhava himself has made there are several you know such examples where you will find many spiritual people when they want to think correctly when they want to make their mind steady calm tranquil they go into silence so two kinds of akara mauna and kasta mauna and you know in in this also you will find that uh, even if for 5 10 minutes we are able to keep quiet if our it, it is our weakness then we can practice that and we'll find that it gives lot of benefit and then at the mental level at the mental level controlling the thoughts regulating the thoughts with the help of right kind of reading right kind of scriptures so that will be the mansik tap so sharirik tap vachak tap and mansik tap tap can be divided at all three categories and if we go according to bhagavad gita tap also could be tamasik rajasik and satvik patanjali is interested only in satvik tap people are there who go to extremes one doesn't have to go to extreme small things very small measures we have to bring in our life we have to change our life in small measures so that we can gain the strength now this say when we talk about uh, tapa one may say that okay how do we apply tapa now quickly we go into that how do we apply tapa tapa can be applied in two ways one we know that this is my weakness i want to overcome this weakness so what should i do now for example if a person is afraid of public speaking he is not able to speak in front of others and he want to he wants to learn that he wants to become confident enough to talk in front of people give speech and give very nice speech so that people can appreciate if he wants to gain that what he has to do he has to again and again talk in public that is the only simple thing he can do so what he has to overcome that why for doing that he has to overcome fear he has to fear, overcome the discomfort of you know facing the people he has to overcome that uh, fear that you know people will laugh at me or i'll not be able to succeed all now that's where the tapa will come 
so tapa can be practiced by identifying certain weak areas of our personality so maybe we want flexibility in certain part of the body we can do tapa for that we want to at this can be at physical level at mental level suppose we are getting angry again and again and because of that we suffer in life or we get dejected again and again we get disturbed so we want to work on this area then we can identify that area and we can decide what tapa will be helpful in that at mental level we may have weakness at the mental level many people say hey aap ye jo book recommend karte ho na jaise hi abhi maine book recommend kiya see i suggested this book so many people say sir tell us some easy book so that we can understand but this is the most correct book now reading that putting the effort to understand that that is going in long run it is going to be of great benefit so that also could be a tapa so according to our weaknesses we decide what is tapa there is another way we can practice tapa which i said right at the beginning as we are going through life situation as far as possible we decide that whatever comes i will not get disturbed i will try to understand the situation i will do what is to be done i will do what is right it in that situation and then forget about it i'll not worry too much about anything whatever are the circumstances i have to deal with them i'll not run away from them i'll not complain i'll not grumble i'll not cry but i will face it and i will do whatever is required to be done that means we don't allow our mind to go into dejection disturbance agitation nervousness and face every situation with a calm state of mind so tapa could be this kind of tapa can be practiced all the time so how many times you, during that day there are occasions when we, our mind is disturbed right from the beginning morning to evening so many occasions are there when we get disturbed when we we have negative thoughts now those are the occasions which god gives us or nature gives us to practice tapa so this we have to understand this way tapa can be applied in all circumstances of our life the idea is that we maintain a certain steady state of mind and gradually we'll find that steady state state comes now this sutra contains two other techniques swadhyay and ishwar pranidhan but this tapa idea it was very very significant and we have to apply it because most of us belong to the category for to which this sutra is applicable most of us are in that category where this sutra can be applied that's why i went into the detail of tapa today so adhyay and ishwar pranidhan we will do next time so today whatever has been stated for that if there are any questions now we have the session open for questions if there are questions or clarifications we can have that yes yes ajay uh we talk about to chitta vritti nirodh we talk about self realization now for a person like me what should be the goal i am still at the first step yama the first uh, yama ahimsa and i am still there after so many years so would that be to higher goal or is it that uh, there is a lack of commitment at times i am not very clear what should be my goal in life the scriptures say it should be self realization chitta vritti nirodh and if it's possible we have that divine potentiality and all that stuff so what have you to say see whether that uh, spiritual highest goal in the form of sampragnata samadhi or moksha or liberation that will happen or not that is a totally different thing but right now what is our problem area if if our good good mental states are maintained as it is then we are really practicing yoga and if we are getting disturbed again and again then we have to identify what is our problem area because without attending to this problem area we are not going to move ahead in any direction for that we have to take care of our mental states so when you said that yoga chitta vritti nirodha in this also yoga chitta vritti nirodha is there if we identify that there is a certain state of mind which is good for us 
and if we put efforts in maintaining that good state of mind we are controlling vrittis because we are holding on to a desirable vritti in opposition to the all other negative vrittis so suppose if you want to feel calm and tranquil throughout the day maintain this awareness and you know and then what is coming into the way what is the problem area that problem area can be tackled with the help of tap so suppose if you identify a certain mental state that you know throughout the day i want to be in a joyful and peaceful state i want to be in a peaceful state and joyful state what comes in my way you know people say something i get disturbed some challenge comes i come i get disturbed circumstances don't go right i become disturbed now these are the problem areas so what we have to we have to practice tap in all those circumstances i want to maintain this state of mind no matter what so right now that could be the aim because unless this aim is met unless we are see a klishta a klishta vritti yoga yoga chitta vritti nirodha vrittaya panchataya klishta a klishta to klishta vrittiyon se pehle mukt ho ke a klishta vrittiyon mein jayenge aur a klishta vrittiyan jab banne lagegi tabhi samadhi ekagrata sab kuch aana chalu ho jayega abhi to thoda prayatna karte hain sukhasan mein baithte hain meditation mein baithte hain to 5 minute mein 5000 पांच सौ थॉट आते हैं मन में तो फिर ये स्थिति में तो हम लोग आगे नहीं बढ़ सकते सी वेन वी आर सिटिंग मेडिटेशन इफ द माइंड इज गेटिंग डिस्ट्रेक्टेड फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल वील हैव टू स्टेबिलाईज द माइंड द माइंड हैज टू बिकम काम सो वॉट इज कमिंग इन टू द वे ऑफ समटाइम द बॉडी कम्स इन द वे समटाइम्स अवर ओन वीकनेस इज अवर लैक ऑफ कमिटमेंट कम्स एज यू सेड इज देयर द कमिटमेंट इज देयर द एफर्ट इज देयर बिकॉज एज आई एज आई सी most of the people who are present here in the uh, today's session they are all practitioners of yoga they are exposed to yoga ideas and in a way they have been practicing yoga for long time so commitment is there but here we are understanding that in spite of that commitment what is going wrong and what we should do about it so tapa ishwar pranidhan and uh, swadhyay can help in that direction so next uh, you know as to uh, uh, this question of how do i become clear swadhyay is the way through which we can become clear of our goals sir jaise klishta vritti se aklishta vritti mein pehle jana hai the same way uh, isn't it uh, kriya yog se patanjali ne akriya yog mein bhi jane ko bola hai like with through kriya yoga we are going towards the akriya no we we will take that when it comes okay right now we are not that stage and we should not be bothered about that stage okay see when when jabhi jabhi wo cheez aayegi tabhi usko koi rok nahi sakta theek okay. hai are we ready for that if you are no. ready for that no see understand no, no. why i i just ask because uh, when you said in the beginning kriya yoga and karma yoga ka uh, ye reference that is the re- that time that thought has came came to my mind so in karma yoga also what a person does see he is facing a situation where he is finding difficulty so he says that okay what is my role in it it is difficult decision but i have to take it because god has given it to me nature has put me in this situation now i have to come out of this situation without action he cannot come out of it if he comes out of that without action he will be a miserable person he will again face that situation so he has to work on it and when he works toward it the next challenge will come पहले में पहली से जब पास होंगे तब दूसरी में जाएंगे दूसरी से पास होंगे तो तीसरी में जाएंगे अभी हम दूसरी तीसरी में अगर दसवीं की बात करेंगे तो फिर वो मजा नहीं आएगा ओके सर या एनी वन एनी क्वेश्चन Nana san any question gautami san any questions if no one is asking like yeah. what i'm wanting to know is suppose we take up this goal of self realization the yeah. sub goal the sub goal could be maintaining my balance always and a still sub goal could be that for some time during the day once twice thrice i experience that peace so yes. is that a right uh, thinking yes that is that is the right way that is the right way 
so uh, you, uh, you know what you said is like uh, suppose after one week we have to go to some place say for example we have to go to tokyo now after one week we have to go to tokyo but then throughout the week whatever preparations we are doing whatever we are uh, doing in at the background this idea will be there that after one week i have to go there so we may arrange our things we may collect our things which you want to take whatever bag is there whatever luggage is there whatever things we want to carry we will collect we'll put it together it is like that if we keep that self realization goal in the mind that is at a distance but whatever is required to be done for that we can start doing so feeling little calm working on the body disciplining the body disciplining the mind feeling some very powerful peaceful tranquil moments during the day no matter what all all techniques are valid for that anything which gave, takes us in the direction of peace and tranquility any technique you know singing meeting friends dancing going on in nature going on the sea beach looking at the sky looking at the trees anything is valid so idea is that we enjoy those state because those states will give us glimpse of what lies ahead so yes sir uh, uh, continuing with that sometimes that goal is there to reach to tokyo but many a times itna preparation karne ke baad aise hota hai ki flight cancel ho gaya lockdown ho gaya aur ja nahi pate hain to maintain that state of mind is so difficult so we try next time <laughs> ab tak fail honge <laughs> see if you are if our intention is clear we want to do something today or tomorrow we will succeed that is what yoga is <laughs> isn't it yes <laughs> asan mein dekho na see you tell me were you were you able to perform uh, perfect uh, padmasan and perfect uh, paschimottanasan or headstand right at the beginning no no, no. we practiced it yes. every day we wanted to reach there we wanted to have that flexibility of the body so we put efforts and then we reach there we reach there every day we work on it it is difficult but we have to we can fail um, occasionally it's okay yeah yeah uh, i have a question sir <clears throat> yes yes uh, regarding uh, the kriya yoga has mentioned in the yoga sutra and kriya yoga has mentioned in say for example that otherwise you will be a master of the kriya yoga and yeah. similar kriya yoga or there is a Are you the names? No, no, no. They, they are, they are different because their entire procedure is there, and they follow certain discipline, and they have called it kriya yoga. But uh, they are not talking only about this tapas swadhya ishvara mandala. So Patanjali's kriya yoga and that kriya yoga will have little difference. Okay. Yes. Yes, Gautam. Okay. You can unmute. Your time is up. We can. Okay. We can leave it here. Okay, sir. See you next week. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, sir. 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 Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Yes. Thank you, sir. I'll switch off. Okay.